Hey everybody, welcome back to another video about geology and media, and today we're going to be talking about Destiny 2, more specifically the planet Mercury. Now I understand that the game is pretty large and expansive with planetary science, much of which is either new in information in debate or simply lacking in information, and to do just any discussion on the planets of Destiny 2, in my opinion, it warrants a video on its own, so that's why this video is going to be solely focused on just one planet in the game. Though, before we begin, and before I forget, I would like to preface everything by considering a couple of things about the in-game world of Destiny 2 and then real life. I understand that a lot of the planets visited by the Traveler has been, in some form or another, terraformed to create the sort of planet that we see in-game. I also know that after this sort of terraforming occurred, specifically on Mercury, that the Vex, which is an ancient alien race with heaps of lore that I'm not going to go into, came into the planet and terraformed it themselves. So we have a few layers of comparison here, therefore I'm going to do my best to try and compare the different game worlds to their real life counterpart that we know. And when it comes to terraforming specifically, the most important part is essentially what needs to be changed. Will the elements and composition of the planet mostly stay the same, or will everything perhaps be rearranged or drastically changed to support life? I'll point those out as we go along. I've discussed the topic of terraforming over with some friends who are hardcore fans of the games, so I understand the argument of space magic, but I'll try to avoid that as much as I can and explain it scientifically instead. Now, for what we know about Mercury today, a few things actually need to occur for it to support life as we know it in the game's simulant past. There's grass, trees, and generally speaking, clear signs of organic life. Therefore, we must assume that the atmosphere needs not only to exist, but also have similar content to that of Earth's to support life. That would mean that the Traveler would have to introduce significant portions of nitrogen and oxygen into the atmosphere. Now, the bigger problem at hand here isn't the atmosphere composition, but rather having an atmosphere in general. Currently, Mercury doesn't really have an atmosphere, rather it just has an exosphere, which is made up of atoms blasted off the surface by solar wind and striking meteoroids. These atoms are still kept within the gravitational pull of the planet, but aren't close enough to act like a gas and thus support a true atmosphere like we see on Earth. And by the way, you can also find all of this information on the NASA webpage for Mercury. And now you're thinking, how can the Traveler fix this? You may think volcanism, which is responsible for emitting a lot of important natural gases into our atmosphere, but and besides the complications involving a lack of convection or mantle plumes currently on the planet, the gases, otherwise known as volatiles, will likely not be retained by the planet anyway. And why is this the case? So you have to understand that Mercury is an awfully small planet and therefore an awfully small magnetosphere comes with it. The strength of Mercury's magnetosphere, which is, was discovered in the 70s I believe, is about 1% in strength of that on Earth. This means that it is less able to repel the strong solar wind impacting the planet. This is on top of the fact that the size corresponds to gravitational pull. All in all, to create a sort of planet that we see in game, we need to first drastically change the atmosphere of Mercury and not only that but also provide the means of retaining it. In regards to how that is done, I don't know. You can't simply change the size of Mercury to allow for sufficient gravity, so it's very much beyond me, and I'd have to think that it would have been done somehow uh, by increasing the strength of Mercury's magnetosphere to allow for an atmosphere to form without it being destroyed by the sun's intense rays. <laughs> anyway, that's a... Uh that's one point for space magic. In a recent paper published in February 2019 by Larry R. Nittler and Shoshana Z. Weider, it's discussed that the surface composition of mercury, as gathered by geochemical data from Messenger, is enriched in sulfur, carbon, magnesium, depleted in iron, aluminum, and calcium. So while the parts that we see in-game for the simulant past of Mercury may not represent the whole look of the planet, we should understand that a garden world here would have been drastically different in fauna in comparison to that of Earth. So I'm not a botanist, but I understand that some of the elements lacking on the surface of Mercury may be extremely important for Earth's plants. Possibly Mercury's, but I can't really guarantee or assess uh, exactly which ones would be which and how different those, plan uh, those plants from Mercury are from Earth. And if these plants are anything similar to those on Earth, they would likely not be living in the same types of soils that we expect to see on Earth, which are high in nitrogen and potassium. In some photos and areas of the simulant past, you can clearly see some clays associated with some ponds and rivers scattered about. So this is clearly another important distinction from current day Mercury, which is mostly dominated by impact craters and 
plains of igneous volcanic rock-like basalt, and clays usually form over long periods of time and weathering of silica-rich rock. Therefore, you'd expect water-bearing carbonic acid, which is formed via the inclusion of carbon dioxide in water, to perform this task of weathering over time. And to get that kind of water, we of course have to go back to the issue of atmosphere, and that's pretty much the most essential part of creating this world. So, to get it, we now know that the Traveler had to change something important like the atmosphere, but in regards to the means, we don't know how. Moving on, we have the current day version of Mercury that we see in Destiny 2 before we enter the Infinite Forest. This version of the planet is pretty much a 180 from what we see in the past, completely destroyed by the Vex and turned into an area dominated by sand, crater, and ancient Vex architecture. I get the aesthetic, and I like the version of the world much better than before, and it's very similar to the world of Mercury that we see today, except without all the Vex structures and dead vegetation. As you may or may not know, given the orbit around the Sun, because it's so close to it, a Mercurial year is about 88 days, and a day, meaning a complete day and night cycle, takes 176 Earth days, meaning that a day in Mercury is twice as long as its own year, so you can imagine traversing that desert and then hoping for a night. but. Wanting a night isn't such a bright idea either, and I should be adding that hoping for a night on Mercury after a super hot day, which would typically be 427 degrees Celsius or 800 degrees Fahrenheit, is equally as hopeless and deadly. Since Mercury doesn't really have an atmosphere, and at this point I assume that a lot of the work that the Traveler has done has been reversed, the temperatures at night can reach as low as negative 173 degrees Celsius or negative 280 degrees Fahrenheit. None of the heat is retained in an atmosphere like on Earth, which is why we still have relatively warm nights. All of the heat escapes and therefore you're screwed if you're caught out. Also as a side note, the atmosphere is essentially, even though it's not closest to the sun, why Venus is the hottest planet, so you can imagine temperatures there being even higher. Anyway, current day Mercury in real life probably still wouldn't look like what we see in game, since it has often been compared to that of the moon, given the similar surface geology of numerous impact craters, which can be partly attributed to the lack of magnetosphere, which I previously discussed. So to achieve that desert sands that we see in the game, which on Earth is mostly dominated by silica and composition, we have to first drastically change the basaltic surface composition that we see on the real life version of Mercury, which is mostly made of mafic materials opposite to those like silica. And if you were to simply talk about the color of the surface, and I'm quoting the NASA website here, most of Mercury's surface would appear grayish brown to the human eye. And while I have discussed the specific changes that need to be made on the planet of Mercury, in regards to the actual means of the Traveler to attain these changes, I cannot say. Maybe one of you guys know. Anyway, I hope you learned a little bit about geology on Mercury, and I look forward to seeing what you guys all thought about this episode. So if you have any suggestions, questions, or comments that you'd like to make, please feel free to do so down below. And if you want more of this content, subscribe and leave a like. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.